stampers. Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I'm super excited to show you this project that I made today and I'm going to show you a couple different variations. I am playing with Brusho again. That is Brusho Crystal Colors. This is so fun and I love beautiful backgrounds. So I've got some great tips for this with a brand new card. Let's get started and I'll show you how to make it. This is the gorgeous card that we're going to be making, and can I just say I'm drooling a little bit? <laughs> is that okay to tell you that? It's a little personal, maybe a little bit too much information, but I love this brusho stuff. I love the amazing dye. This is so cool. I'm going to show you where all this comes from, and if you can see it, I don't know if my camera will focus on that. I'm using some of our clear and glitter epoxy dots on there too, and that just adds a little bit of interest, like maybe it's a little dew or something, I don't know. And the Petal Passion Designer Series paper, just a tiny little strip of it. All right, let me show you how I did this. I'm gonna just cover up my area here because I don't want any of the brush color to get onto my surface underneath. I like to start out with my cardstock layers. I have got a piece of Whisper White thick cardstock. I love the thick cardstock for my bases. This is four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half. And then I've got a piece of our watercolor paper. You need to use watercolor paper or shimmery white paper for the brush show technique. So this is four by five and a quarter. I've got a four by four scrap of watercolor paper here a scrap of basic black cardstock and a quarter inch by five and a half or five and a quarter. I think it's five and a quarter. Anyways, we're going to trim it. But a quarter inch by at least five and a quarter of the Petal Passion Black and White Designer Series paper. I just love what a black and white, little piece of black and white can do to a card. It just really makes it pop. So I'm going to give my card base a good burnish here with my bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, we have these. They're relatively inexpensive. And um, when you go to my online store, you can just type in the search engine bone folder and you'll come up with these. These are great for curling our baker's twine or other ribbons that curl um, and burnishing your card fold, right? All right. I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way. The first thing I did was I embossed with clear or white embossing powder a flower. And I'm actually going to do two different cards for you today. One I haven't made yet, so we're going to be in it together. You can let me know what you think. I'm using the Beautiful Day stamp set. This is in the Occasions Mini Catalog, and it's featured on the same page with the Brusho crystal colors that come in a box like this. We get five different colors. I've shown you these before. If you missed that video, you may want to go to my YouTube channel, Kelly Atchison, and look for the brush show video. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to use both of these images on our card today. And then I also brought in the um, framelits that I showed you, my um, framelit tip yesterday. I'm going to be using the amazing out of here. And I just wanted to show you the amazing framelits also have a matching stamp set. Both of these items are free during celebration. You get this one free with a $50 order. You get this one free with a $100 order. This is a fabulous duo. So if you have a big order going in, you may want to consider these two. I'm just going to set those aside now and I'm going to be working with my background piece. So I'm going to show you how I did my background, then I'm going to show you how I did my flower. And I'm going to be using an aqua painter and also one of our Stampin' Spritzers. These are great. You get two in a pack for like, I don't know, four or five dollars. They're super fabulous. There's several different ways you can use the brush out. I'm going to show you one way here. And for my card, I used the Gamboge and the Brilliant Red. Now, when you get your um, brush out, you're going to poke a couple holes in the top of it. Don't open the lid. That's not how we use it. You just leave it all like it is and just poke some holes in it. I've got two holes in this one and two holes in this one. And then I store it in my box like this. I don't have any issue with any problem. It doesn't spill or whatever. The way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to put my powder on my watercolor cardstock first. I'm going to do some red here and some orange on each side. So I'm just going to sprinkle out some red. If you find that it's not coming out, again, just do that. And that seems to really help. This is more than enough red on this piece. And now I'm going to do a little bit of orange on the corners. 
And again, if you need to, just go like that. All right, we're going to move this out of the way because the magic is about to happen, people. I am going to take my spritzer now. Usually we say use less water. For this technique, you actually need more water. And usually we say stay back away from your project. But with this technique, you're going to get close. And I am just going to... And you can make this move places. I think I would like just a little bit more red. Look at that. It's just beautiful. There we go. Wanted a little bit more red. If you want to move that around, you can spray it. Once those crystals activate with water, they like burst open and make amazing backgrounds. So super, super pretty. Now I'm going to set this aside so it can dry. This is why I have a lot of layers on my table. Oh, one more thing I want to show you. I've been doing this card for my um, stamp clubs this month, and you can blot off some of this excess water. Um, you can also take and blot off your whole card. You're going to get a whole different look out of that than if you didn't do it. So there's just a ton of different ways to um, make a different look with this product. So you can do that. Then I'm going to try and do something a little bit more controlled here. And what I did, I'm going to take the gamboge, which is our orange and the yellow. I'm going to use the gamboge right in the middle of my rose. I don't know if you can see that, but I have a rose there. You'll see it in a second. There's a leaf over here, and I'm just going to color that, cover that up with my finger because I don't want my color to get on that leaf. And now I'm going to come around with the yellow. And I'm going to leave my finger there while I come in with my water. Now, if I want to, I can add a little bit more orange. I think that would be pretty. I want this to be just a little bit more intense. And I'm going to let that dry like that. Now, I'm going to take the moss green. This moss green is really interesting. It's got purple in it, it's got brown, it's got green, it's got yellow. So you wanna be very careful. I'm just gonna tap some out here on my paper. You could put it on a acrylic block if you wanted to, but I don't know why we need to get that fancy. And I'm going to bring in my aqua painter, make sure I have some water coming out and I see that it didn't get cleaned last time. So we're gonna get the yellow out of there. And where did my leaf go? Here it is right here. I'm gonna just take a little bit of this. You don't wanna over mix this moss green because if you do, it will turn a muddy color. The reason why it does that is because there's brown crystals in there also. So you just wanna tap it a little bit and bring in your green. And you can see how different that color is already. Okay, now I can hit this with a heat tool or I can just set it aside and let it dry and I'm just gonna set it aside and let it dry for the purposes of this video. Next, I am going to come in with a piece, again, of four by five and a quarter watercolor cardstock, and I have a butterfly on this one. So I've already embossed with clear embossing powder a butterfly, and I am just going to take, let's see, let's, let's do something a little different here. I'm gonna take some orange, and maybe a little yellow. There's some yellow in the orange, and then I wanna do some red. There we go. All right, let's see what happens. I, this is the one that I haven't made yet, so I don't know what this is gonna look like. It could be a complete disaster, just hang with me. Okay, that looks kinda of cool, doesn't it? I want to get a little bit more orange in here. And then what I wanted to show you is that you can bring in your aqua painter. And I'm even going to put some orange right there that I can pick up. And I'm just going to bring this in here and I'm going to color over my butterfly. And it's funny how when you do that, even though I've used this color underneath, it then makes your butterfly, butterfly look altogether different than your background because you've muted these colors. You don't have a bunch of swirls and polka dots going on there. Once this dries, 
you can take a um, tissue or a paper towel and you can wipe off the white embossed area. Let me see if I can get this clean first. I gotta put this away. And that's just gonna make your butterfly kind of stand out in the middle of your card. So that's another thing that's just totally different. I'm gonna mop up a little bit of this. I'm gonna leave this water that's pooling over here because I think that's gonna make for a really cool background. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. And to show you a little bit more about what I just did there, I am going to grab a block because I wanna get some more color out here. And I'm gonna grab some orange. There's not much orange coming out. Sometimes you may need to reinsert um, your pokey tool in there. And now, again, I've got a butterfly on here, and you can come in here and you can color this. And I had somebody ask me, well, why do I need the um, Brusho Crystal Colors for coloring techniques? Well, you may not need them for coloring techniques, but I like to know all the different things that my products can do. So if you would like to use them for coloring, you certainly can. And this stamp set, The Beautiful Day, is a perfect stamp set to color with because it's got, you know, these kind of like, um, what do they call those windows? Um, stained glass. <laughs> stained glass windows. There we go. I didn't have it coming out very good. And I'm just going to come in here, color up the rest of this. Get a little bit more water coming out. Then what I would do with this butterfly is I would cut it out and mount it on a card. And I think I want to do just a little bit of red too. Now how do you get this off of your blocks? You just rinse it off. It's not going to hurt a thing. Um, let's come in here and do a little bit of red. Like I said, this could turn out to be a big disaster. And it's looking like I've messed the whole thing up. But I wanted you to see that you can color these images with your brush out too. And if you're good at this, it could be very beautiful. Me? Mm, I don't know. Well, it's kind of pretty, isn't it? Got some different colors in there. Let's see what happens. Let's try something else. Let's do a little bit of the red. Just going to sprinkle this on here. See what happens if I just squirt it. I think that's going to be pretty. Mmm, delicious. Ooh, look at that. It's almost like watermelon colored. So the uh, good rule of thumb here is the more that you do with this, the more cool things you can figure out to do with it. And uh, the sky's kind of the limit here. I really do love this stuff. It is amazing. Okay, let me show you what I've come up with here. I already have some of these backgrounds done. And what I can tell you is, let me get this stuff out of the way. All right, we got that cleaned up. What I can tell you is that every time I have done this, it has turned out different. Look at how different these three backgrounds are. This one, I didn't use as much red. I put the yellow in the middle um, instead of the orange. Got a lot of red going on out here. Here I used the orange and the red again. Here I had a little speck of blue show up in there, so of course the colors burst on that. So I've got three very different backgrounds here doing the same thing. And then here are a couple of my roses. So I'm just going to, oops, I'm just gonna cut out this rose and we're gonna put our card together because it's super, super easy. I hope you guys are having a great week. I have had a wonderful week and I have some fabulous news for you. Um, thank you all for your prayers. For my stepdaughter Anna. I love her dearly. Um, she is recuperating. Her infection is um, letting up. I can't say that it's completely gone yet. 
She has a doctor's appointment today at three o'clock that I'm gonna take her to. But um, she is back to her old self. She's starting to, you know, like, say things that she wasn't really caring about when she was sick. Like, ugh, I can't wait to do my hair. And um, last week she could have cared less what her hair looked like, and it showed. <laughs> She would laugh at that, believe me. Um, but, you know, when you don't feel good, you don't give a hoot about any of that other stuff. And she is feeling so much better. She's still got a long road to go. I've got to take her to a specialist in Milwaukee. Sorry about that. I couldn't find my dimensionals. Um, I'm going to take her to a specialist down in Milwaukee. Her appointment is at 5.30 in the morning. Um, they're going to do some type of a scope to go in and see what's going on with her torn bladder. But um, So we're going to go down the night before and... Um, she doesn't know this yet, but I'm just going to get a hotel, and I think she'll really enjoy a little girl time, and I know I will too, because I, like I said, I love her dearly. I'm very lucky to have her in my life. I think I'm going to take this piece, and we're going to take that little tiny strip and put that right on the edge here. So I'm just going to, whoops, I'm going to add my glue here, because I know that my strip of paper is a little bit longer than this piece. I think I just cut it six six inches long because I knew I could cut it off. And I'm just going to butt that up against the edge and we're going to turn it over and trim it off. So yeah, I think that'll be nice for me and Anna to have some downtime where she's not thinking, you know, she's going to die any minute, which is pretty much how we were feeling. It was um, pretty scary for a while there, but now I think, like I said, I think she's going to be okay. I'm using Fast Fuse because you can see that my paper is a little bit warped and I'm just feeling that if I use Fast Fuse it's going to hold it down better and right away versus the glue which I will have to hold on to and I don't want you guys waiting because while I do like to talk a lot, I'm sure you have better things to do than listen to me yikity yak about everything and then watch me hold down glue, right? One thing you have to be careful with this Fast Fuse is it's like sticky strips, so you usually don't get a second chance. I was very lucky that I could pull that up there because I got it on Crooked. Oh my gosh, already, already, isn't that just amazing? I think it's just amazing. Okay, next, what I'm gonna do is I am going to take my black scrap and I'm going to cut out this little amazing word and I'll be right back and here we go I love that this pops right off of there these words pop right out there's no pokey tool needed for you know to get them out of the die I love that now watch me rip off the end here don't rip off the end there we go okay and then I'm just gonna bring out my pokey tool to get these little inserts inside the letters popped out and that should do it. Okay. Again, this is the free, this is free. Um, we are going to mount our flower. Then I'm gonna decide where I wanna stamp a word on the front. That gets a little scary. Okay, here comes my rose. Oh my gosh, delicious. Can you say delicious? That looks delicious, doesn't it? I'm gonna put my words right here. And then I've got the little U. And this is from the amazing U stamp set that goes with the set of dies. And I'm just going to put it right in here. So I'm gonna get this out of the way. Put my U in there, yay! At this point, we don't wanna mess up our U, right? <laughs> um, heck no. And then here I come, because this is a very thin little die, I am going to use my sponge and glue technique to put glue on the back of it. So I'm just scribbling some glue on my little plate here. This is sticky and that sometimes can be a problem. If you want, you can wash these sponges out. I'm just always too lazy to do it. And don't put glue on the front like I just almost did. <laughs> We're gonna put glue on the back of our amazing word. And we want to go not all the way to the end. Okay, so we're gonna do about that much up to the G. And then we're just gonna do a little bit on the end of the, the last G, I mean the Z, sorry. Okay, let me talk about this again. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Okay, 
whoops. Okay, so you don't want your amazing to cover up your U here. So we need to make sure that we are getting this. There we go. I want my U to kind of be in this blank spot here. Oh my gosh, look at it. Okay, so I went up to about the Z with the glue on the back of here. I did put a little glue on the back of this little whirly thing, but I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm not going to tack it down. And then we need to add our little glitter and clear epoxy dots. These are so very pretty. And I just added, it's hard to see, I know, in the camera, but trust me when I tell you. But they add that little something extra. I'm going to get my little sticky tool here. You guys have seen me make these. It's just a dollop of this glue on the end of this stick, and it helps you pick up things that are tiny. And I've just got three little epoxy dots on there. Can you see that? Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to set these aside. Here's our gorgeous card. And then I wanted to show you a couple more. Here's another gorgeous card. And you can see that this background looks very different. Well, not very different, but you know, different. Here is another one, and this is a little bit more brilliant. I believe this one was um, dried with a heat gun. You can take a heat gun to it, and that mellowed out the color, whereas this one was left to dry all on its own. Now, what are we gonna do with the butterfly card? Hang tight, I'll be right back, and I'll show you. Okay, I'm back. Are you ready for this? I am going to put this card together. I just took a few minutes to do something a little different with my butterfly card. I cut my watercolor layer that I have my brush of background on down to five by three and three quarters. And then I put a piece of basic black behind it. Oh, I did it again, you guys. Let's see if I can get this up. Okay, I did pretty good. I put a piece of basic black behind it that's four and five quarter, four and five and a quarter. I added my amazing dye. Okay, there we go. Gosh, and I added a So Saffron card base. I thought that went really good with the yellow in here. I cut my butterfly out. I've got it mounted on dimensionals, and I want to make sure that it goes over the edge of my black layer, but doesn't cover up my amazing word. Right, you guys. Oh, I'm so excited. What do you think? Aren't these beautiful? Brusho. Brusho. You gotta get yourself some. Um, you can hop on over to my store and order some of this stuff. It is fabulous. If you add $20 more to your order, like if you get this beautiful day stamp set, okay, you um, can push it up to $50 and you can get this stamp set for free. So this stamp set matches the thinlets that I use for the Amazing Word. And, um, you know, you need $100 to order this, $50 for this. You get these both free for a $150 order. Plus, now that I'm thinking about it, if you push your order up to $150, you get hostess benefits or stamping rewards. So you get an additional $15 free, just like you had a party. So win-win beautiful. Don't forget to click down here on the subscribe button. You'll find my blog address up at the top of the screen in the right hand corner. If you'd like to place an order, I always appreciate your orders. Thank you so much for keeping me in business. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what you think. What do you think of these? I think they're super cool. I think I, I might try a yellow butterfly next time here or maybe an orange butterfly to go on this background. I don't know. Sky's the limit with brush -o. You guys have a fabulous weekend. Bye-bye.